everyone and welcome to this new panel. Uh, first, I would like to thank the first panel, which was really quite interesting. And we're trying to follow this conversation with another conversation, the second panel talk of the day. And we are going to talk actually about the future of work in metaverses. So what do th does that entail? How does that work? We're trying to have our esteemed panelists try to answer these questions so that you know more, you, we go deeper each other, and we build toward a better future uh, in the workspace uh, in metaverses. So first, I'd like uh, to thank Jeremy Hennett, uh, Stephanie Solesio, uh, Max Ensguillo, uh, Quentin Forez, Bourez, and uh, Michel Stanis. I'm sorry, Quentin. Um, so uh, we're going to start the conversation. And, but first and foremost, could you all introduce yourselves uh, brief, briefly, if I may say? All right, so I can start. Uh, I'm Jeremy. I'm co-founder of Crypto Guilds. Uh, so Crypto Guilds is an uh, aggregator platform for guilds, uh, games, and scholars. Kind of the LinkedIn of the metaverse. So just to give you an idea what guilds are, it's like companies in the metaverse buying a lot of NFTs from different games. You can use these NFTs to earn some crypto by playing the games. And basically what guilds do is they buy this NFT, they lend them to scholars. Scholars are players that cannot afford to buy the NFT in the first place. And then scholars are going to play with the play to earn NFT and make some money. So guilds buy NFTs, lend them to scholars, and they share whatever money they make. This is a kind of new business model, play to earn in the metaverse. Hello, everyone. I'm Stephanie Zolesio. So I'm basically managing the real estate uh, sub subsidiary of uh, Casino Group, which is a food and non food retailer internationally. Um, why real estate and Web3? Because we launched an innovation team, um, let's say one year ago, uh, very active and trying to uh, test and learn from different projects uh, involving Web3. From, uh, let's say, the first stablecoin in Euro that we launched one year and a half ago, to the NFTs uh, that we minted for different uh, brands in our company. But also we collaborate with other already existing uh, NFT uh, collections. We also invested in different uh, metaverse platforms and we developed uh, different projects such as a uh, play to earn game for one of our brands involving some rewards uh, that we can earn by playing, but also with uh, avatars and NFTs that we minted that gives you some discount and, uh, and rewards when you order. We worked with uh, different, um, different partners for that and we, uh, we try to accelerate, of course, because we really believe that uh, the link with our customers tomorrow and already today, actually, is uh, necessarily involving metaverse, NFTs, wallet, and all that is connected to uh, Web3. Hello, everyone. My name is Maxence Guyot. I am the co-founder and CEO of Wagmi Studio. Wagmi Studio is an agency that works with a huge company like uh, Casino, L'Oréal, Pernod Ricard, and we provide services like how to create an NFT collection from the creation, the ideation, the, the imagination of an NFT collection to the, dev the technical development, um, to the, the, the selling of NFTs. We also provide uh, training for companies like uh, how to uh, set up a MetaMask, how to create an NFT collection, how to secure your digital asset uh, in your companies. And the third activity of Wagmi Studio is the development of uh, DeFi protocol for uh, blockchain. Hi, everyone. Uh, my name is Quentin Torbez, and I'm the strategic director of BEM Builders. We are uh, an agency, and our role is to help brands to enter the metaverse. We have a specific focus on very like precise experiences and the big focus on architecture. Actually, architecture is one of our main focus and we are trying to develop very purposeful experiences for brands. And we do as well uh, training for brands and also uh, consulting. Uh, hi everyone, um, my name is Michelle Stanley. I'm the head of economics at ERA2140. Uh, recently, we changed our business model and we're becoming a venture studio. So basically, we help uh, Web3 projects scale from zero to, to the moon and beyond. Uh, that's our purpose. 
So we help projects go through the entire pipeline of production from the business consulting, the strategy marketing, uh, the tokenomics and game economics where I come in, and also like the generative arts for metaverse projects. And most importantly, in the metaverse universe, we're trying to create interoperability between uh, metaverses as we're working currently uh, with the land uh, project to create a, a connection between Sandbox, uh, Spatial, and Polyland. Really interesting, thank you very much. Uh, may we uh, first um, explain what metaverses are because some of us may not be comfortable with what metaverses are. So could you, could someone help us uh, try to define what, what, the, what these are? What, what, what's a metaverse and what are metaverses? Oh, maybe uh, I could start. Okay, D this definition is quite uh, tricky. We don't have the same, everyone don't have the same actually. That's why it's interesting yeah. to try to know what it is. <laughs> yeah, I take the, the mic first, so be kind. <laughs> I think metaverse for me is quite of an evolution of what we call, actually, internet. And I rather prefer to use multiverse or virtual world to explain what other people actually say is metaverse. So for us, we make a distinction between protocols, internet, infrastructures, and application. And for me today, what we call metaverse is only the part of application. application. And we need to make a twist on this definition to integrate actually all the, the stuff around it to really have what we call, we need, and we want to have as a metaverse. Actually, it's only multiverse for me today. But okay. that's fine. <laughs> Maybe taking the origin of the word metaverse, um, it comes from meta, which means parallel, actually, or over something, and universe, which is um, a real new word, let's say. And to me, uh, and this is really uh, how we, um, we consider it, metaverse is a new possibility around what you already built uh, to create new experiences new um, emotions, new relationship between people, new relation to you, the world that, uh, that is our environment. Uh, you don't have any gravity, you don't have any uh, physical rules in a metaverse, you just have your creativity and some technical limits, let's say. And uh, meta metaverse, when you consider it like that, and not with technical aspects, <laughs> mm -hmm. um, means also a universe of new possibilities that you can build. This is why I think, as a brand, it's really important to consider that if you just create the physical twin in a digital world, it's good to attract people and to catch people for curiosity. They will come to see what you built, but they will not come again and again, and you cannot engage and commit your community and your customers when you do it like that. To me, metaverse is not a twin word for, let's say, um, uh, not close people that want to see, uh, let's say, the Tour Eiffel or whatever, in French. Uh, but it's more a new experience that you can build to add it to the physical world and the real life world. Sorry for this phys philosophical thing. It's not technical, but it's, it's also another way to, uh, to really consider it. I believe it's something that some people call uh, XR, extended re reality, which would be an extension of the, 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 the world we, we live in right now. So yes, but you have with the metaverse in the Web3, uh, one uh, very important ingredient that you don't have in just, uh, let's say, digital or new world, it's the authentication and the unicity and the property of the asset. This is what is really important to understand is that as long as you um, provide the authenticity and the unicity and the proof of property, then you can also have new exchanges, you can have new properties and new business also coming from that. This is what is really important to understand. It's not just one t-shirt among another and you just copy and paste the image, it's really an asset that belongs to you and that you can use, uh, you can merchandise it, you can do a lot of new possibilities. This is why it's not all about emotions and engagement only, it's also about new possibilities 
including the business ones. Yeah, I think we'll uh, delve a little bit uh, on this topic uh, a little bit after, uh, in, uh, uh, in, a, in a few minutes after in the discussion, because it's a very interesting uh, thing to define is uh, how economics uh, would work in a, uh, in a metaverse. Jeremy, Jeremy, would you like to tell us what's your vision of a, of, of a metaverse or, or metaverses? So I think for me it's pretty, it's a lot of a, a buzzword, marketing word today, metaverse. I a bit disagree with you, not entirely, but a bit, in the sense that for me metaverse has existed for many, many years. It's any kind of virtual environment, that's it. It can be a video game and it's been here for years. Right now in the mind of people, metaverse, yeah, for example. And now in the mind of people, metaverse means virtual environment plus blockchain but it doesn't have to be that, it's just what the use cases are right now. So any kind of vir virtual environment. Uh, yeah, I definitely ag agree with your definition. And for me personally, I think the metaverse is the next iteration of the internet. It's been here since the 90s. It's, it's always existed. But with every new technology, you have a, a, a very gradual ramp up in terms of adoption. And now with the whole cryptocurrency ecosystem, with Web3, you have more adoption. It's getting known out there. And everyone is talking about the metaverse as the next big thing after the internet. Uh, so for me, uh, as you said, I think it's any virtual world where you can immerse yourself and actually create an alternate ego in that world. And this is the, the premise on which it's built ownership and you defining what you want to be in that world. So you could be a software developer in this world and be like a DJ in the metaverse. You have the, the, the right, the, the latitude uh, to do whatever you want in the metaverse. Just may I add a quick thing? The, the way the, what we call the metaverse is built is the same as what the, the way internet is built. They are the same technology, infrastructure, computer, uh, graphic machine and everything. Just an iteration. S certainly. Yes, yeah, I totally agree with, uh, with uh, Stephanie. Uh, I think it's, uh, in my opinion, it's a layer on the reality. And uh, the uh, just thing I, I, I want to add, it's a persistent and continuous uh, digital world that uh, the, the life is uh, continue um, um, uh, if you are not connected on the, the, the metaverse. The, the, meta the metaverse with, will il uh, involve and um, it's uh, like a, a digital world that uh, everything is possible and uh, you can break every uh, uh, barrier, uh, everything uh, that uh, in the real life you, you can do, like uh, we can remove every gender, every uh, uh, color of skin, uh, everything that you can imagine we can break in the, in the metaverse. Really interesting uh, point of views and uh, actually v various point of views. Um, may I ask, may I just add, uh, what Neil Stevenson has written about uh, metaverses. Neil Stevenson is a pioneer writer of uh, the um, Snow Crash novel, and he actually considered another virtual world that would be persistent, where people would live in, would interact, um, and that's his view of what the metaverse would be, and, and, and what metaverse, some metaverses are, are trying to be right, uh, today. Actually, there are also s other metaverses. Some of them are experiential, and they're built around very short experiences, so maybe they will m be more akin to uh, virtual worlds, uh, virtual like virtual games, virtual experiences for maybe a few hours. For instance, if you're trying to attend a concert, a fashion show, uh, such things are coming in in virtual worlds, and a lot of builders, entrepreneurs who are building metro, um, metaverses are working on this option of, of short, kind of short-term experiential uh, metaverses. So I think we've led our discussion towards uh, what are economics, uh, what kind of economic system would work, or uh, would, would be put in place in metaverses, or are actually uh, trying to be are, are, are today in, in metaverses. So could you explain and explain us how economics could work and are working in, in current metaverses and in future metaverses? So I, I think there are actually two models and they're represented in this panel, which is pretty, pretty great. There's a model of uh, companies doing business in the metaverse, which are from Web2 or traditional companies, and there are economies inside the metaverse, only in the, inside the games, actually. Uh, so what I can say for what I do is we so you have this emergence, as I mentioned earlier, of guilds with new business models where you buy a lot of NFTs, 
from different metaverses, different games. These NFTs are actually uh, letting you earn some cryptocurrencies, so earn some monies. And the whole economy in the metaverse revolves around using these NFTs, buying them, selling them, using them, lending them. And this, this kind of a new model where it doesn't matter who you are, where you're from, whatever you do, the only thing that matters is uh, how you're going to perform in the metaverse. What are you going to do with these NFTs? Are you going to, if it's play to earn in the games, how are you going to perform in the games? Are you going to earn some money in these games? So obviously, this has been tremendous uh, business in the last two years, and now it has a lot of flows. So a lot of uh, companies are trying to solve that, but that's kind of the, the way to go. Play, work, wear, use to earn. It's uh, what happens inside the metaverse. Representing, I guess, uh, the second option, so meaning the co big companies and corporate uh, groups that uh, use actually the metaverse as a new means of doing business. I would say that um, for us, it really represents um, a new way of uh, creating use cases, very I interesting actually use cases. We are in the middle of our test and learn uh, approach. And um, it gives us the opportunity, uh, first, to prepare the future. We know uh, for sure that, um, le let's say, younger customers are, play are playing more and more on screen. They are spending more and more time on the metaverse. The uh, recent uh, study of Gartner says that uh, people of 15 years old uh, will spend more than one hour on the metaverse next two years. So it means for us, our next customers, we need to be prepared for the future. So first of all, is prepare the future. Second um, opportunity that we see is that we can also engage and create new links uh, with our customers in a way that was not really um, possible before, meaning creating new uh, experience, we said it, but also the play to earn thing is something that we can really push um, further than what was done before. And the play to earn is not just about playing and earning something, something because we don't need Metaverse to do so, but it's really a new state of mind saying that a cultural movement is there. And we believe that the, the, the society, globally speaking and not only in a country, is completely changing and the way and the relationship that you have with brands, with big companies, with the economy in general, is really changing fast. So we really want to understand also the new culture coming from that, the new uh, social uh, evolution that are coming in the, in the economy and the business, because if we miss it, we believe we will miss a lot of the of the, not only the business, but also on, on the, the link we can create with customers, or not create, because you may know that the data uh, belongs to uh, the owner itself uh, in, the, in the Web3. It's also a new way of interacting and collecting or not collecting data with the customer. So it's not only about creating a new business and saying, oh, I did it, we are in the technology and it's good for the newspaper. It's not about that. It's really about understanding the role of this new channel that we have and the new rules around it and the new way of thinking, the environment, the uh, relationship to other, the relationship to the brands and the new consumptions we are all together creating. If we do understand that, we will have also the new rules for the next generation and how we can create new models and not only new business. I think this is really the way we have to work as a big corporate company. Um, something that I love in the, in the metaverse is uh, wearing is a new economy. Wearing like a t-shirt or, or a pair of sneakers. Because uh, right now I'm not paid by, by the brand by sh wearing the, the, the sneakers like us, for example. And in the metaverse, for example, everybody, everyone can be a virtual influencer an influencer, and um, each time I wear my Lacoste, a pair of Lacoste, we can track every view. And for example, if the brand can say, okay, you, you wear your pair of Lacoste and 1,000 of people uh, seen uh, your, your Lacoste on the metaverse, okay, I will 
send you, I will reward you, 1,000 tokens, cryptocurrency, etc. And you can create a new uh, experience with uh, your customers, a new, um, new way of uh, a loyalty program, because uh, everybody will buy your NFT uh, Lacoste, everybody will buy your NFT uh, L'Oreal, for example, and it's a uh, a real and concrete use case, uh, in my opinion. Yeah. And also the share of the, uh, of the value is, uh, is different with the artist and so on. It's also a new way of, of uh, thinking about how we share the value creation. Yeah, and what we talk about that is that the fact that when you look at Roblox this day, kids are incredibly creative. And when you talk about brands and you talk about APs and everything, there are no possibilities today to, to, for us to appropriate them and to make value with that. But what I, what I am really regarding off is about the fact that all these kids are creating a shit tons of huge experiences and they have a lot of fun. And for me, that's the economy. It's the economy of fun and creating actually, not especially for brand, with brand, but only for fun, for playing, for with your community. I think these kids only wants to play each other and that's okay for that. And I mean, brands could really help these people to make better experiences. So that's what we really want with that kind of economy. Um, at ERA, we have a, a kind of a different vision. So when you talk about experiences from brands, uh, short experiences that uh, gives you the thrill or an insight into a company's experiences, uh, we, we term this the miniverse. It's not really the metaverse. When we talk about the metaverse, we think about the metaverse as infinite and all-encompassing. Now, all of this fits into the category of the metaverse, but for us, the metaverse should be able to accommodate everyone and be like a world economy. So now when we dive into the economics of the metaverses, what do we mean? Let's look at the country, for example, uh, the EU. You can travel from Lisbon to Paris. You can go to the Czech Republic without borders, right? These countries have different currencies and different systems of operation. We have the euro in the European region, and you have currencies in other places, right? You have banks, you have exchanges, you have issuing houses, you have the federal exchange that control the monetary system. This is the vision we have for the metaverse. A metaverse where any startup can plug in its token and operate in that ecosystem. A metaverse that's token agnostic. A metaverse that's blockchain agnostic. Imagine when you have a metaverse that developers from Solana can work in, developers from Ethereum can all collaborate in the same metaverse, creating immersive and deep experiences that kind of create an alternate reality from what we know today. This is our vision for the metaverse. Now, what we have today, we have lots of uh, companies working on the metaverse. It's a race to build the biggest metaverse. Meta is always joining the race, uh, Facebook, of course. The problem with this is it's always based on the play to earn economy. So it means play this game, you're gonna earn some money. Axie Infinity did the same thing and the token crashed. And that's because you designed token economies without actually understanding the flow of money in your ecosystem, without understanding the effects of inflation, without understanding that when you give someone uh, the promise of reaping 100% ROI in one month just by playing games, it's not sustainable. So we need to design economies around the fact that we're trying to mimic what exists in the physical world and import that into the virtual world. I kind of disagree with you, sorry. <laughs> because I think it's not only about, um, about uh, players and, and f fun builders, let's say. We, uh, we can also have real builders, even the young ones. They can also uh, build, being, being artists, uh, you can have, I'm from the real estate industry, so I will talk about architecture. You can also create some real assets for the beauty of having it. And it's not only about fun, you can also be very serious in this world. So I, 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 I kind of agree with you guys saying that, of course, there is a, f um, a fun economy that is, is becoming more and more obvious. There is also uh, the sustainability of that which is questionable. But still, we have plenty of different use cases that are possible. And this is why I think we should really uh, stay at the moment, all of us in a test and learn approach, I, I repeat myself, but it's, I think, important because plenty of different things are possible. We all own 
write the rules, we all build the rules, words, the new rules of this new world with the new culture, and everybody can really build what he wants to do. Uh, the only limits are technical, and there are not plenty of them, actually. So I think to, to um, answer your question about what economy can be, uh, can be uh, cre created with that metaverse, any economy, actually any of them, and it's quite easy access, because of course Meta needs an Oculus and mask and so on, but if you take the sandbox or the central land, you just need a mere computer with a keyboard and a mouse and that's it. So it's really accessible, and if you are creative, I mean uh, in terms of design and art, or in terms of creative economically with a new business model that wants to build, you can do it. Excellent, thank you. So we've already talked about what metaverses are, we've tried to define them, and then we've talked about economics, an economic system that would work within a metaverse or metaverses, um, which leads to our next question, which would be how, um, what, what, sorry, what kind of uh, job opportunities we may have within uh, metaverses, but all, also in the, in the real world related to uh, metaverses? So uh, again, it goes back to the same thing. So in, in the metaverse, you can basically complete actions, achieve tasks, do different kind of things, and earn some cryptocurrencies, and that's a job for many people. So with the Axe Infinity that you mentioned, we have uh, uh, around one or two million people in the Philippines that actually for a couple of months were earning up to $1,000, $2,000 a month playing three hours per day, which is 10 times their uh, like average salary. And uh, obviously right now it's much, much lower. But that's the point is that you can play to earn, you can uh, like use all these NFTs and kind of uh, achieve things in the metaverse and that is a new job. Some say like the most uh, maximalist VCs in the space, like Animoca Brands, the, the, the CEO recently said that his crazy bet for the next five years is that there will be more people earning money in the metaverse playing than people earning money in the auto industry, really? in the real world. That oh. is bet. I think it's a crazy bet, but he said that. So uh, maybe the, the reality is in the middle, but the point is that uh, this is where the opportunities emerge inside the metaverse, and then outside the metaverse, it's more uh, you. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I think there is no inside or outside the metaverse, because when you see the, the rise of technology and the need for new assets, images, and infrastructures and everything, there is a plenty of plenty of jobs that already exist that will be lacking people for the next 10 years. Uh, we need to produce images, we need to produce buildings, we need to use BIM software, BIM engineer and everything, and infrastructure technologists. So there is a ton of jobs that are lacking people and we need to more of that to teach them how to do it well. And well is learning them what can be the utopy of the internet and the metaverse for the moment and trying to shape uh, together what we really desire about this. But I mean, for example, we do a lot of architecture, for example, and we are lacking a lot of people trying to modelize what could be a water uh, flu fluid system. And yeah, we need this kind of jobs and they are, not for the moment, tr hard to, to reach. The people doing that are hard to reach. So you would say that uh, people that have a specific expertise or, or skills in the real world could, put, could translate them very easily in metaverse. Is that what, you what you're saying? No, they, they won't translate it because already they are building digital solution. For example, beam, uh, beam engineers. They are making all the time 3D assets for buildings. They are already doing it. We need more. What I can say is that when I started uh, to be interested in, in Metaverse and Web3, uh, not that much time ago, <laughs> I, um, I was told initially that it was a new word when you erase any form of intermediary. And uh, I was told that you don't have any intermediary, you have di direct relationship with uh, each other. Then I discovered a lot of new words that I didn't know, new um, jobs, um, saying, oh yeah, but if you know, you know when you do DeFi, then you have 
you, you have a liquidator. Uh, it's needed because uh, da da da. Okay. When you do that, oh, you need a new job, which is called blah blah blah. And I discovered a lot of new jobs actually, new jobs that I, I never heard about. And even more, when I started thinking really how it works and how I could trick the thing and relate it to my real world business, I was myself inventing new words and new jobs in my head, saying to my team, oh, but we could do that, and we could rename and rebrand that, because you know, we have this guy in our team, he's really good in doing that, and if we explain to him what Metaverse is all about, then we could create a new system called blah, 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 and, that. and then we discovered that, again, the limits don't really exist, we need, definitely, we need new jobs, not only in the, in the specialized company in Web3, but I think any, any, any company in the future will, will need not to have Mr. or Mrs. Uh, Web3. We all need to implement Web3 in our jobs and definitely, I'm pretty sure about it, in 10 years time in my company, we will have new titles that don't even exist uh, nowadays. And we are really aware of that. Coming from the real estate world, it's really real, <laughs> it's real assets. And I can tell you that I'm sure the architects I'm working with, some of them are quite old and don't really know about metaverse. We explain to them and they're really open to it and they're even ready to create new jobs in that company. Myself, uh, we created a, a new team and we started uh, hiring people more specialized in management project because this is the, the view we have at the moment. But I'm pretty sure we will create new jobs linking this, let's say, old word to the new one. And actually it's not about linking, it's about creating new things together with old skills, new skills and soft skills. Uh, so I, I think the, the bandwidth for careers in the metaverse is quite huge. Um, you could open up a pawn shop in the metaverse. Uh, you, you could be the guy that collects lands and leases those lands to businesses, and that's your source of income. That's a full-time employment in the metaverse, but you do not work for anyone. You have people that work for the metaverse, but they're employed by companies, by giants, for example, Meta. They don't really work in the metaverse, but they found a role in the metaverse that has no real connection with the metaverse. Um, you could buy lands, like I said, and create your own experiences on your lands, and people pay to experience those things you've created on your land. Uh, when you start to think about it, it's very huge. Think about crypto guilds, for example. Uh, I thought about an idea, like you could have digital asset managers in the metaverse. You could have banks that were created exclusively on the metaverse, right? And you can have metaverse native companies, just like you have digital native companies. You would have companies that were conceived, developed, and the full operation is done in the metaverse. So like you wake up in the morning, you're going to work, but you have to connect your Oculus Rift, you have to get ready to go to work. It's, it's, it's something that, I don't know, it, it tears up some excitement in me when I think about it, because it's the future and it's already here. And the rate at which we onboard people is quite slow, which opens up another avenue for careers in the metaverse. What if you have someone whose job is to onboard users and help them have a smooth transition from Web 2 to Web 3? Till now, it's still quite technical to connect your wallet, to send uh, crypto to this exchange and do some, you know, some transactions to operate on DeFi platforms. It's a headache, honestly. And most of the people you see right here who are like crypto OGs, they learn this things by practicing, by failing, by losing tons of money. How do we make these experiences easier for the novices around us, for, for the crypto noobs, as we say? So I think it's, uh, it's quite broad, and we have to explore all avenues to onboard more people and create more careers in the metaverse. Uh, I just jumped back in just two minutes to say what you were saying. One of the new way uh, uh, industry are evolving that blew my mind is actually regarding so guild and scholars and there are some companies that contacted us and, and to figure out like what our scholars were doing what their performance were and they were basically an insurance company or a, a credit company as well and they were wanted to emit loan based on players performances in the games so players performances in the games mean they make some money 
And based on their performances, they would emit new loans that they can use for whatever they want. The real world, even if they want to, I don't know, buy, buy a new house or whatever. So there's kind of a, this scoring model for insurance credit based on on-chain data is the blockchain, uh, based on what people are doing. All these kind of things uh, completely blew my mind. It's actually happening right now. Um, I would like to switch a bit about the subject, but I have a, a short story to tell you. The other day, Mark, which is the, the guy running the human resources at Band Builders, asked me, guy, does your Wi-Fi is good? I said, yes. After that, he told me, does your chair is good? I said, yes. He said, okay, are you well set up for working? I said, I think so. He said, okay, no, I will send you someone to check if everything is okay. And I was like, Okay, thank you. And I think this is another point we can reach about working inside of the metaverse. We need to take care as well of the people. Uh, and we, we saw it a lot uh, this day with the COVID. Uh, actually, we need to make our people working in the digital comfortable in the real life. And that's also a kind of new job that will appear for real, the taking care of people working online. So, yep, that was just a, a quick... Um, Exit of the subject. I'm Thank sorry. you, Quentin. It was actually the right uh, gateway to our to my second question. To my uh -huh. second question, so it's, well, it's actually perfect. It's not coordinated. So, Quentin, thank you very much for reading You're my welcome. mind. You're really impressive. Uh, so, my, my next question would be: employee and, and employers' um, relationships in metaverses. How would these would work? And like you said, uh, these employee employers' relationship could also be outside metaverses. So could, you, could our esteemed panelists answer these questions about how do you think these relationships are going to be and are going to evolve from what they are today? Maybe I can start. I think the less we see for real, working in the same room, working each other, having a coffee, I think the more we need to take care of ourselves in our company and there is new support function for that that will appear like okay are you good are you set up enough and everything so i think there will be a more human consideration uh with that kind of job because it's necessary uh spending i think at least 12 hours in front of a screen is totally exhausting for your mental health and for your body, actually. So we need to take care of our people. So that's really, really, really important. I think I very much disagree with you. I think it's going to be completely different in the way that all the, all the data is public, all the data is on, on the blockchain, code is low. And what, what will happen is you don't really care about who the person are, if they're happy or not. What you care about is what they do and what is the data that they, they create and how much they earn. And you can see that and compare that to everyone else live all the time, so it's going to be much more dehumanized, completely uh, data-driven, and uh, so you can be unhappy about that, but the point is that the possibilities it makes are just going to go, like the market is going to go in the direction. Maybe I'm in between. <laughs> I would say that it's important also, not only for employment, but in general, to uh, wonder why are we going to the metaverse? for such a subject. It can be employment or other subjects. I mean, um, metaverse is not an end. I think it can be used as the beginning of something that adds something to the reality. I, I said it or, or, uh, earlier, experience or, or data or whatever. And it's important also when, when you are an employer or an employee to wonder why I, I, am I doing this meeting on Metaverse rather than in real life? Does it add something compared to a real meeting? Does it add something to the, 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 sorry, the experience compared to Zoom or Teams or whatever, Google Meet or whatever, whatever you use? Uh, if it, if the, the answer is no, it doesn't add anything, then don't do it on the metaverse. It's just useless. Metaverse is not an end. But on the, on the other end, when you take your mask uh, with meta, for instance, then you are focused only on what you have literally in front of your eyes. You cannot switch from one screen to another. You cannot pretend 
to listen to a meeting, but in fact you are writing an email. You cannot be there without really being involved in your meeting. And once you understand that, and once you experience that, I think for certain meetings where you really need people to be focused and not doing two things in the same time, it adds something to be in the metaverse. For other meetings, it's completely useless. And then you can reconciliate um, both taking care of the person, but also sometimes you just need to be focused on the data efficiency and not more. And I think the good balance will be by finding the right um, balance between those two words that need to coexist. And I think it's important not to switch from real life to Ready Player One in one day. It's important really to understand what we want to do. And after you have written this vision, then you implement it. This is my, my point of view. Very personal one, it's not a casino one, it's uh, mine. I kind of lost my train of thought for a second there. Uh, but when I think of uh, employee-employer relationships, um, so you have companies that work in the metaverse, but their day-to-day -day operations, it's not on the metaverse. So why do they need the metaverse then? It could be like, okay, to have meetings and this and that, but it's not really the premise on which the ap uh, metaverse applications is built. But now let's talk about this kind of companies. So you have a metaverse. Uh, take Lempire, for example. It's a startup in Paris. Uh, when you go for an interview in, in Lempire, you go into a virtual environment. You have an avatar that walks around. You can see who, which employees online. You can have a, a breakout conversation. This is the importance of metaverses. Uh, there was a research that says that spontaneous conversations and discussions account for a huge percentage of business conversations. And in some cases in R&D and research, and when it comes to innovation, it accounts for about 90%. Because you have like a, an idea that pops up in your head, and you can see right on your screen, you see like your, your colleague, you see his avatar, and then you just go have a conversation. There's a startup working on this that allows you to have spontaneous conversations with your avatar, with other colleagues that you meet in the metaverse. So you have your avatar walking around. Once it gets in close proximity to a different avatar, it unlocks like the, 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 the chat um, uh, applications between you and that avatar. That is one way you can actually have an interaction between employers and employee. Uh, you can have uh, meditations, guided meditations, uh, relaxing sessions. You have the opportunity to teleport off-world with, uh, with your CEO, for example, your CTO. In traditional companies, this doesn't exist. Uh, it's changing when it comes to Web3 companies. At ERA, which is a full web uh, venture studio, we have a flat hierarchy, uh, hierarchy system. So you have the CEO, you have the CTO, they all have their roles. The, the designation comes mostly when he, when, in terms of the roles they fulfill. When it comes to interactions, you can hardly tell who the CEO or the CTO is. The interaction is just flat, and that's one of the amazing things that we have in young companies building on Web3. We've taken out the barrier between employer and employee. The question now is how do we enhance this? I read about a report that talks about having a digital human assistant in the metaverse. It's very scalable. You can deploy this assistant to numerous uh, locations. There's a risk because it could displace human workers as well. And then you have an interaction between you and your digital assistant. There are no rules, there are no regulations uh, deciding how you talk to your assistant, right? So you could become aggressive and violent. Now, researchers are bothered. How does this translate to real life interactions with your colleagues? This is one of the risks that have been considered when it comes to metaverse interactions. So I think the possibilities are very huge. Uh, it's our job and the jobs of uh, people in, in responsibility, the stakeholders in the metaverse, to understand the impact of a metaverse on their employees and their business model and the, you know, the objective of its company and see how they can you know, make a fusion between the two. So we, we mentioned a few points about um, relationships within the metaverse, uh, relationships between employees, relationships between the employee and the employee. Do you think that uh, metaverse is bringing new possibilities towards uh, employee education or uh, on, uh, employee uh, onboard, onboarding? What, what are your thoughts on these two uh, subjects? Of course. <laughs> of course, because it, it's... Um 
like for a concert or an event in general, first it's a way of, of um, teaching and coaching uh, a lot of people in the same time, <laughs> which could be difficult sometimes if you try to do it in a, in a physical room and you have uh, pe people all around the world, for instance. Second, I think it's also a new way of uh, catching the attention and, and the, the commitment, uh, I mean, mental commitment of your employees. Maybe in 10 years' time, I, I wouldn't say it anymore, but at the moment, it's still quite exciting for a lot of people to, uh, to test new formats and new ways of, of behaving and, and having this kind of, of um, learnings. And also, it's a new way also to, um, to uh, as we said earlier, to take people from the old world to the new ones. Um, giving them new opportunities to have like a second career in their company, in the business they already have. Um, and we have a lot of people um, telling you after a few years, you know, my job is quite repetitive and they're really good in what they do, but they just need some, some you know, new things and new challenges. And I think it's also a good way to, uh, to teach them that new things are possible in their job and in the company and to, to embark them in this new world and in this new way of doing it. We did it at Casino, I did it in my teams. It has been a year now that regularly we, we um, just for free, let's say, we explain to people and not only the innovation teams or digital teams what Web3 is all about. We do it for people um, like our accountants or financial or legal, uh, Every, uh, every team in, in, in my uh, subsidiary can, can have it. And I was really surprised to see how many people were really uh, embarked in this new, uh, new subject. We even had uh, an intern telling me uh, at the end of his internship, you know, Stephanie, I made more money thanks to NFT, thanks to you and what you taught us than in my internship with investment uh, things. So it was for, for us, uh, really a pride to say that we uh, we interested these people and we we um, gave them something for free that really uh, committed themselves in their job and offers them new opportunities. And when we talk about skills, for example, I think when you have today a LinkedIn, I can lie to you on every point of my LinkedIn, actually. I can say that I have done something or something else and everything. And when you talk about uh, training for your salaries, for example, now you have a technology called proof of at attendance, and that could be really something interesting to have for CV, for, uh, for curriculum vitae, for example, know what people are really attend to. So that's really cool, for example. And I join you on the data on this point, <laughs> for example, Jeremy, not on the other one. <laughs> uh, yes, I, you have a question? Yeah, that's a good question, thank you. Um, briefly, I would say that um, the, speci the specificity is that uh, I'm in charge of the real estate, as I told you, but also the Web3 for all the group and all the branches. So we are at the moment uh, in a very test and learn approach, as I told, uh, because we think that it's something we need to explore. We don't have any uh, you know, very strict answers, we are quite agnostic on that. And we are more in a, let's, um, let's explore what we can relate to our business, either, as you said, to sell more, either to, um, to uh, help people to know a little bit more about us, I mean, not only on the product, but also on who we are and what we think and so on. And so, on. so loyalty, it's about loyalty, it's about um, also uh, how we implement it on the, our logistic to improve the logistic, and, and we did it already, it reduced really a lot of issues. 
Uh, we also use it in every, actually in every parcel of the company, we have something to do with the Web3. And this is really this ecosystem that we are building at the moment, uh, not only for one branch more than another one, and not only for one business more than another one. So it's still the beginning. Um, but I, my strong belief is it's really important that we don't do it with a silo. We do it all together, building this ecosystem and linking everything together. Because it's like if you say digital is only for hypermarkets, but it's not for, for the logistic. It's completely stupid because digital is good when it's an ecosystem. If you just have one part of the company which is related to the web and not the rest, it doesn't work. And we did it that way with the Web3 and Metaverse in general. So everybody is welcome to explore with us at Casino. We are the team who uh, help the other to find the, the good partners, to find the right model, but they are really in charge of their content. It's really important that we don't speak over them. This is their content and this is how so you engage the, the colleagues. Uh, I think it's very uh, it's mandatory for a brand to uh, to onboard their own um, employee because uh, next year we, we will have um, maybe a new pandemic crisis and uh, it's very important to uh, to onboard the the, the employee to uh, to send us uh, an avatar that represents the brand into the metaverse because in the metaverse it's very important to say okay this guy or this girl work for a casino work for L'Oréal and. Uh, we can break all the barrier that we will have with the pandemic crisis and uh, we this is actually what we do with the Wagmi studio we created some like ecosystem and metaverse for for brands and we can say okay for people that are physically here we can do a physical event and if you are in india or china or every, everywhere we can participate to the event and uh, and about the, the diploma and the nft uh, one thing that is very important is uh, the launching about the, the launch of uh, the SBT about uh, Vitalik Buterin. The SBT is a soulbound token that allows you to offer uh, a token that you can't sell, you can't, uh, you, you can exchange, you can, um, and it's your own token that you have on your corporate wallet, and it's like your employment history because you can't erase it, you can remove your token from your your your, your, your wallet, and um, I think in the the future, every employee will have his own uh, corporate wallet with his own token, proof of attendance, diploma, trophy, etc. And I bet that LinkedIn will link your corporate wallet with your profile. And you can say, okay, I, I participate to this event to, um, from L'Oréal, etc. And you, 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 can't, uh, you can't lie for, uh, on your life and uh, on your uh, uh, professional life. So you actually just mentioned my point on the SBTs. Yeah. <laughs> but that's okay. Um, something else is... Um, the question remains, are the skills acquired in the metaverse via trainings or whatever, are they transferable to the physical world? This is a question that remains to be answered. So I think it's an open question if you have any opinions on that. Oh, I mean, I'm a bit afraid about SBT for the moment, in some words, because in the real life, we all do mistakes. But I need, if we implement this, we need to take in consideration the fact that people have to explain the mistake. I don't know if, if I am clear with that, but we need to teach people how to explain they have done something wrong, and that's totally fine. There is something a bit, a, a bit strange with transparency all the time, transparency everywhere, is the fact that Okay. It's a it's a choice actually. Yeah, okay. It's like so for nice. I think it's like for health health data. Um, this is really um, sensitive questions <laughs> because <Yes. laughs> you need to be sure that what you share this day will will still be it, it's still your your will uh, after a few years and we all have to you we all have to um, remember that what you share one day in the in the blockchain will stay forever. And then it's a choice. 
Well, uh, something you have to understand, uh, SBTs are tokens, are regular tokens as well. You just can't transfer them. So whatever happens, if it's sent to your wallet, all you do is burn the wallet, create a new wallet. It's as simple as that. You have to think outside the box. You're not tied to a particular wallet. Hence, you're not tied to an SBT. But the, the point yeah. is that it's actually, you need uh, service providers that will filter and tell these are the good ones, these are the bad ones, because SBT is pollution. It's like an email that never, like a spam that you can never erase from your wallet. You can have millions of spams in your wallet, like SBTs, people will send you for advertising or whatsoever. So actually, you will not burn your wallet. You will need serv <laughs> service providers that would say, these are real and these are not. And you actually doesn't disintermediate this intermediate, but bring a new one. Exactly. Uh, I, I do agree with uh, Jeremy on it. On it. On this point. Um, now we'll literally only have two minutes left, so I will have a very short question. And could, could you answer it really with three words? So, literally, how uh, can we ensure that the workplace is better in the metaverse than what it is right now? In three, you can go up to a sentence, but please, no more. Just make it super brief. Three words, we can't. <laughs> no, I'm sure we can't today uh, answer to this question. We need to build it and, and do it the best we can. I will say we don't have to. Define better than right now. Yeah. It's really hard to say what is bad, what is good right now, what can be better. Yeah, it, can, it can be a question of uh, ethics and morals. but. Yeah, in, in a few words? Um, I think uh, we will be more productive in the metaverse. Great, Very, really interesting question. And really, these last uh, closing words are uh, quite... Um, um, how may I say? They, they help us understand better what metaverses are, what, what future we can have in metaverses as employees, or as uh, actors of metaverses. And actually, I think we've talked about all different points of what uh, metaverses are, what economics within metaverses are, what job opportunities there may be, what we can do to make it better. I think we can ma make things better in some ways. And I really have to thank our esteemed panelists for this uh, very um, interesting topic and, and, and how they answered them with, with their own experiences and try to make uh, the job place and, and, and metaverses uh, better and better so we can live better lives also in the metaverse. Thank you all. Thank you.